national media coverage about states like Oklahoma that have concealed carry laws and starting next week will have open carry laws. Explain your view on Oklahoma gun laws and the Second Amendment. Well, number one, my, the last part of that question, my views on the Second Amendment. I um, have carried a, a short gun and a long gun ever since uh, we came to Oklahoma in 1966 to protect me and my family to shoot critters with and unfortunately every now and then to put down a calf or a cow or a bull. But uh, for my right to bear arms it was put down in the Second Amendment. And uh, don't just take my word for it. If you have a copy of the National Rifleman, and I happen to have a copy here of this month's version, you'll look in here and you'll see the ratings and the endorsements. I was endorsed by the NRA. I have an A rating that you know pretty much says it all, that they've recognized that. I've tried to work with them in all legislation that I've authored, and we've come to uh, uh, common agreements. Um, as far as the right to carry, I, I think, and I know my friends in law enforcement will not be very happy with me, I think we put too many restrictions on law-abiding citizens and it allows the outlaws to have better guns and more of them. So that's my feelings on the Second Amendment. Well, Mr. Russo, I believe you talked about your feelings about that. However, you voted the exact opposite. In fact, you voted no on two Second Amendment bills. As a matter of fact, there was an attempt in 2010 to pass open carry and you voted no. There was an attempt to increase the right uh, to be able to, for law-abiding citizens who have concealed carry permits, to be able to leave their guns inside uh, while they, in their cars while they go to a VOTEC uh, class. We're talking 21 years and older. You voted no on that bill too. Uh, you mentioned you have an NRA uh, endorsement. I have an A rating as well. They call it an AQ because I'm not a legislator yet. But NRA is a national organization and they normally don't get involved in the state of Oklahoma. Matter of fact, they didn't get involved in the open carry until this last time around. Now, the organization that did get involved and has been fighting day after day in the state legislature has been the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association. And I'm proud to say I have their endorsement because we fought tooth and nail to fight for the Second Amendment rights. Your Second Amendment right to open carry, to constitutional carry. And I will be a strong supporter of the Second Amendment and I will not bow to party pressure whenever there's a bill that the governor does not like. And I think it's important that we have a consistent conservative fighting for our Second Amendment rights every single time in House District 12. Mr. Tackett, how should your political party's national platform affect District 12 voters in the relationship to your race? Our state platform in the Republican Party is about 60 pages long. There are a lot of issues there that I believe in. There's a lot of issues there that I may not believe in. I think it's important that we don't let the party guide my principles. In fact, I should let our, my principles and the rest of your principles guide the party's platform. It was a shame and a travesty that the Democratic Party took the Bible and their support of Israel out of their platform and only after a national outcry put it back in. But what's more important is not to say, well, that's what's in the platform. What's more important is to follow your principles and to follow your guidelines. And I'm a strong constitutional conservative. I believe in following the Constitution. Now, if the Republican Party platform agrees with my view of the Constitution and what I feel is a strong, strict, conservative understanding of the Constitution, then absolutely. But just because the party says it's wrong, I'm not going to bow to party pressure. I'm going to bow to what is right or wrong, and that's what should be done as a state legislator. Dan, I believe your question had uh, two things. Uh, one was national party platform, I believe, not state, and the other was your party, meaning uh, the respective party of the candidate you're asking. Is that it's uh, wait? The question was how should your political party's national platform? affect District 12 voters in relationship to your race? Well, the, the thing that should affect the voters of House District 12 is what affects us here in Wagner County. And that's how I think that uh, what should affect my votes at the state capitol and always have. So what the national politics do, and I don't know about you, I'm sick of watching all of it. I'm sick of watching both candidates. And I just want to know what can we do here in Wagner County? What can I do at the state capitol? And so I guess uh, as far as the national uh, political parties and their platforms, 
I'm not interested right now. I'm interested in what the folks in this room, the folks in Wagner County have to say. Always have been. Always. Folks, we've got a sticky note on our cabinet in our kitchen where our coffee cups are. It's a quote from Plato, a Greek philosopher. It says, when men speak ill of you, so live that they will not believe them. So live that you will not believe them. A lot of these issues, a lot of these issues that have been brought up are twisted. If you'll do the research or call my office or anybody else's office, you don't want to call my office to get an unbiased, get the bills. I'll go through them with you. Some of these bills have several subjects in them. You can take what you want out of them and say what you want. As far as Bible study in school, I filed a bill. If you're going to do your research, do it thoroughly. I filed a bill before this legislator did to have Bible study in school, and the Christian Broadcasting Network called me and said, we've already got that. And you have in the state of Oklahoma. You have to urge your local school boards to get that done in each school district. Let's work on a letter together. We worked on that together. We didn't, we didn't get it done and thoroughly follow through with it. That's why I tried to tell Representative Sally Kern that we've already got this, we don't need this bill, but you couldn't talk to her. So why do we want to keep wasting your taxpayer dollars by voting on bill bills that are already in the statute book? It's ridiculous. And as far as the Second Amendment, folks, there's only one endorsement from the NRA. There's only one A rating in this race. I've got the magazine. Come up here when you're done. I'll meet you. Get it at home if you're an NRA member. And there's no two A ratings. There's only one. There's only one endorsement. And I was told in my letter, besides what the magazine says, the letter I got, use this however you would like to. And when I got elected, I polled the schools and asked how many would like to have in God we trust in their classrooms. And I purchased over 440 of these, and most of them are still in the classrooms today. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Tackett, your three minutes, sir. You've heard a lot of rhetoric from my opponent. <laughs> Excuse me. But I look at the facts. I look at the votes. Wade voted no on the Religious Freedom Act. Wade voted no on open carry. Wade voted no on, uh, on when, it, when it comes time to give our schools the local control. Now we can talk about why we didn't vote no, and that's what you've been hearing from legislature, from the legislators time and time again. It's time we hold our legislators accountable for the votes they make, not for the, what they say. We can say whatever we want to say, but what matters are the votes. Right here are every single one of the votes that Wade has made. The ones that he's made no, the one that he's voted yes. He voted yes to decrease your right as a business owner to be able to keep your property. They now can condemn your property if it's underdeveloped. Talk about reducing the rights of the private business owner. This is not what it means to be a conservative. A conservative means vote right. Anybody can talk right. I urge you, look at the votes. Don't look at the minutia. Look at the votes. When it says open carry and they voted no, that's what you need to look at. Now, if you talk about the endorsements, and you're right, NRA endorsed you. I got an AQ rating because they, I'm not a legislator, so I can't get an A rating. They only give that to legislators. But the bottom line is there is only one Second Amendment organization that has worked here in Oklahoma day in and day out to increase your Second Amendment rights, the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, and they endorsed me. The bottom line is you need to ask yourself, do I want someone that is going to vote right every single time? And one issue that I was very upset, that very sad that we didn't get to talk about was the issue of life. Wade Russolo has voted against your, the right to life on to more than one occasion. The life, right to life is so vital and so important that we need to be protecting it every single time. There was a vote to, to ban the use of embryonic stem cell research where they would destroy the embryos to, uh, in order to do research. Wade voted to against that bill. Now, I get a little choked up about that just because my son was born two weeks ago, and I can't imagine why anyone would vote against the right to life. But I promise you, as your state legislature, I'm going to vote 100% pro-life. I'm going to vote 100% the right to protect our, right, our, our Second Amendment, and I'm going to work to improve our schools, improve our infrastructure, and to increase our public safety. I ask you on November 6th, please cast your vote for David Tackett. Thank you.